or this video that I saw earlier this morning. I normally don't watch videos like this, but I ended up clicking on the video and I saw a five minute video about, it says Grandmaster Dan Insano tears up talking about Bruce Lee. All right, so I saw the video and there's certain things that I liked about the video, what he said, and certain things that I disliked. And I just wanted to give my feedback on it. Um, so then people kind of have a, an idea of my thought processes and how I feel about things like this. Um, this video is not intended to be disrespectful towards uh, Dan and Sano, um, but it's just giving an honest opinion or just reflection on the whole situation because you know we we all you know love Bruce Lee and we're all gonna have different ideas and thoughts and I just want to share mine so I just want to kind of go over it piece by piece you know as as it comes out it's a five minute video so it's a great honor to have him here uh, I'm a former student of Michael Kripke. Um as, as far as uh, its philosophy goes, how is it Filipino's philosophy different from uh, Bruce Lee's uh, philosophy as far as the martial arts go? Uh, is there any difference if there is? Yeah, I, I like, uh, I was very fortunate to train under Bruce Lee. I get very emotional, so I went up crying. But uh, uh, I taught him the new chunks, but we don't call it new chunks, we call it Tama Tuyo. That's a term to be used in the Villabreo Medusa family. All right, so he says that he trained under Bruce Lee, um, but then immediately he says that he taught him the nunchucks. Um, Tayo so yo is what he said. In Chinese and Cantonese, it's called Sunjit Guan. Uh, so he taught him the nunchucks. So, which I don't doubt. You know, I really think that that that's how it happened. Um, Danny Sano was very proficient with weapons, especially the nunchucks and and with the double sticks. And so, it already shows right there that he wasn't just a student of Bruce Lee, but he was one of Bruce Lee's teachers, right? So he, that that is one thing that I want to indicate right there, you know, um, that this is more of a, more of a sharing relationship that was established. It wasn't just a strictly teacher-student but Dan Isano was actually teaching Bruce Lee something as well, right? Uh, and that's the new chance. And I taught it to Bruce Lee, he liked it, you know. In the beginning, he didn't like it. He says it's a piece of junk, but he's kept on using it in the movies. So I figured, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I think he must have liked it. I, I taught him double stick, and I thought, he's my instructor, but I shoot. So he said he also taught him the double sticks. All right, so. I mean, another example. So he said that he taught Bruce Lee the nunchucks and he taught Bruce Lee the double sticks. So really, was Bruce Lee really his teacher or were they really like sharing ideas and techniques amongst each one another as martial artists? You know, um, essentially what, what this is kind of indicating is that Danny Insano was a own, his own martial artist in his own right, just like Chuck Norris was and Bruce Lee was. So they're not really, all three of them are not really, it's not really a master-disciple relationship. It's more like, hey, we're all instructors of the martial arts. Bruce Lee is representing the Chinese-American martial arts. Danny Sano is representing the Filipino martial arts, um, and then Chuck Norris was representing American martial arts, um, but he was trained in Tang Soo Do. Um, so 
they are more so sharing ideas and techniques as martial artists opposed to Bruce Lee being the master over or the Sifu over Chuck Norris or Danny Insano. The art of the Kali and the Supreme Ernest with Bruce Lee, both the single stick and the double stick, and uh, definitely the Tabu Tuya, which the Oak now is called uh, the, the New Chuck or New Chaco. But they're the, the Okinawans uh, are the last ones to get it. A lot of southern uh, Okinawans, they look very, very similar to Filipinos. Because a lot of the melees were, uh, they were always caught in southern Formosa, first southern Okinawa. And as they moved down, like even the, the side is, is an Indonesian Malaysian weapon. But uh, Bruce Lee, the reason why they're so closely connected, because they're free thinkers. They're not going to use it if it doesn't work. And that's the way Bruce Lee was. He, he said, we're going to test it. We're gonna, you got to test it. You have to field test it to see if it works. And it will work out. So he mentioned that Bruce Lee says, you know, they're not going to use it unless it works. Well, that's all subjective, you know. Because um, nowadays, who's going to Who's gonna walk around with nunchucks? It's silly. And even so, even if you did, they're not even, they're, they're banned from the law, so you even get in trouble with the law. So, if you're not gonna walk around with nunchucks, and you're not gonna really actually use it for self-defense, then why practice it? Um, so, but being an actor in Hollywood, then, he might practice the nunchucks because he wants to introduce it in a film, you know, in, in a movie. Then it becomes useful for that movie, but it's still not useful for real life because if you're not going to carry it in real life, then what's the use? So everybody's use is different. So Bruce Lee being an actor, there's going to be some uses that, that he will find in it that other people that aren't actors will not find it. There's going to be some people that actually will want to carry it out there on the streets and they don't care if it is against the law. So it's not, so it's, it's useful for them in case something happens. Um, but then there's people out there that own guns, that have concealed carry permits and they're legally allowed to carry guns. And it's going to be a lot more effective weapon than the nunchucks. So, they might not find it useful to even learn nunchucks because they have their gun. But even if it's not useful for self-defense, there's still a purpose of learning it simply because it's a martial, it's part of the martial arts and the expression of it. And if you, if you like using a weapon for the purpose of training in martial arts, then you have the freedom to do so. It's not all about whether or not you're going to use it for self-defense is just, hey, you know, I just love training with weapons because it's just something I like to do, even though it's not going to be useful for the streets because I'm not going to carry this nunchuck with me, but I just like to learn it. I love to learn it, and I just, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I just love learning, you know, so... That's what I have to say about that part. Some, some uh, circumstances do not work under other circumstances. So definitely, uh, they think a lot. Uh, a lot of people, we all, uh, Tuangahi told me that, uh, that when, they, when they had a problem in uh, doing the, the counters to a defense, they would stay up to two and three and four in the morning trying to figure out what is the best solution if that position happened. Uh, whether it was stick and dagger or the daggers and the dagger or the empty hands. And so uh, that's probably why it's very, I don't know if I'm managing the question properly, but that's why the system is very good because he was a free thinker and most Filipinos are very free thinking. You know, they, they really have a, a Persian influence, they have Indian influence, they have Chinese influence. You have the, the New World influence that come with the, uh, with the Aztecs. You, you have definitely the European uh, use of arms. The Jesuits were the ones that brought a lot of European arms. So in our stick and dagger, particularly in the most I study, it has 10 to 20% European, right? 
So uh, they pretty much learn from each other. If they didn't have that technique, they were going to have a solution for that particular attack or technique. And that's why it, it, it's the same thing the way Bruce says. We, we test it out and see if it works and then we test again. So his thing is research, experiment, create. Research, experiment, and develop. So said research, experiment, create. Research, experiment, create. Um, that's that's good. Um, that's something to go by. You know, do your research, experiment, and create. But create your own. You know, don't imitate. So, you know, what he said was create, not imitate. Research, experiment, create. Create your own. Don't imitate. Um, and don't plagiarize and steal from others. Research, experiment, and create, right? So... Right, because you have to tailor-make the system to fit yourself. I suppose it's just it's how you apply it. Alright, so tailor-make the system to fit yourself. So, research, experiment, create, and tailor-make the system to fit yourself. And because everybody is so unique, everybody is themselves, then nobody really can teach like what he was doing because it was his way you know you gotta find your own way within the martial art you're not supposed to just imitate him or steal from him but to create your own way right and nobody can really teach his way because they are not him. Apply things to make it work. Yeah, it's a, a play where you have to really apply it. Because what works for one practitioner may not work for another practitioner. Any art teacher, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Alright, what may work for one practitioner may not work for another practitioner. Which is very true. Um, but this is where it starts getting, where I, where I, where I have some disagreements. Um, he starts talking about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If you have a bigger instructor, he's 230 pounds, his technique is going to be different, right? So you have to adapt the technique to fit you. I love to play basketball, but it's not going to happen in my lifetime. <laughs> All right, so he loves to play basketball. He brings up to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and he says that they had the same philosophy. Well, so Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu came after Bruce Lee. Way after. So, how is it that... Is, how, how is it, how can it not be that they didn't steal Bruce's ideas and just apply it to their system. You know, Bruce's idea and then Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu comes after, oh, you know, I like that, so let me just take that and then say that that's what we do too. Basically, he didn't have to bring up Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's essentially a conflict of interest from Jeet Kune Do. First, he's talking about Bruce Lee. He's talking about Jeet Kune Kundo. Um, he's talking about the Filipino martial arts because he's Filipino. But what does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu have to do with any of that? You know, so what I don't like the idea, what I don't like is him trying to endorse Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and at the same time endorsing like Jeet Kune Do as if they're the same or similar. No, it's like, if they are similar, it's because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu took that idea and said, hey, I like that idea, so I'm gonna use that idea. But I felt that he should have stayed to just talking about Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee's methods and not bringing up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, and then talking about the 230 pound person they're gonna have different techniques 
than somebody who weighs like 120 pounds. Bruce Lee died at, at, at 125 pounds. And Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a lot of hands on stuff. A lot of stuff that they're doing is a lot of like type of wrestling type of things. And it's like those types of things are more built for bigger people, you know, and it's a different type of fighting method than what a smaller person would do. You know, essentially, you wouldn't want to wrestle with somebody who weighs 100 more pounds than you. Um, I was saying I was the ball. You know, weighs 100 more pounds than you and, and also does this, has the same type of training that you do. You know, that's not really working to your advantage at that moment. Um, so, Bruce Lee was a small person. Um, and even Royce Gracie, from what I know about him, he was over six feet tall and he was like over 200 pounds or he was a big guy himself. You know, he wasn't small like Bruce Lee and he's representing the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So their fighting methods are not gonna be the same. And you look at Royce Gracie and the way that, the way that he was fighting in the cage it has nothing, nothing in comparison to Bruce Lee. It, it's completely different. And they're, they're not even similar at all. But if you compare like Bruce Lee to like Floyd Mayweather Jr., there's some similarities there. I mean, there, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Was, Jr. was a smaller person. You know, um, he wasn't big like Royce Gracie. He was small like Bruce Lee, but just a little bit bigger. Um, and his, his boxing style is very similar to Bruce Lee. So comparing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to Jeet Kune Do is, is, is not the right comparison. They do not compare. They're completely different. Comparing Royce Gracie to Bruce Lee, they're completely different. They don't even look the same. They're not, you know, one person's from Brazil, one person's from China. One person weighs 125, another work person weighs over 200 pounds. One person's five, seven and a half, one person's over six feet tall. They have different languages. One person favors wrestling, other person favors stand-up. They're completely different. You know, and, oh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu follows that same thing. Well, they stole the, the idea from Bruce and there's no need to talk about something that's irrelevant when the relevancy is Bruce Lee and his ideas. You know, um, it's a conflict of interest because if, okay, he was, a, he was a student of Bruce Lee back then, but then now he's a student of Royce Gracie. So where is the loyalty in a master? But like I said at the beginning of the video, it's, it's specified they're not even, it wasn't a master-disciple relationship. It was just basically a martial artist relationship. So it could be Bruce Lee, Danny Sano, Chuck Norris, Royce Gracie, they're all considered looking at each other as equals where there's no master. Royce Gracie doesn't look at Bruce Lee as a master, Danny Sano doesn't look at him as a master, Chuck Norris didn't look at him as a master. He didn't look at Bruce Lee didn't look at Danny Sano as a master. He didn't look at Chuck Norris as a master. And, and, he, and then he doesn't look at Royce Gracie as a master because he wasn't even there. But this is just martial artists sharing techniques and ideas amongst one another. And there's not even a master present. So there's no loyalty to anybody. So basically everybody's just taking techniques from who they want to take it from. And um, Danny Sano is not being, you know, he's not a loyal disciple to Bruce Lee. Essentially, there's conflict when he's just going to different whoever to learn from. And that's one of the issues that I see within the martial arts as a whole to begin with. On my fifth grade basketball team, so I have to learn how to adapt. Likely, if you're 280 pounds and you want to be a jockey, there's no horse going to carry you. <laughs> right, so you have to adapt. So if you're 280 pounds, you want to be a jockey, there's, no, there's not going to be a horse deck that could carry you. Well, that's how I see wrestling and this Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's like this is designed for bigger people because they like to get hands-on. They like to choke you out. They like to break your arm. They like to manhandle you. 
So this, this Brazilian Jiu Jitsu art is not for smaller people. You know, if you're, if you're wrestling around somebody the same exact size of you and you're 120 pounds, okay, fine, you might win, you might, you might be the king of the ground for, against 125 pound people, but you're not gonna be able to be successful wrestling around and doing all this ground fighting with somebody that weighs 200 pounds. Not just weighs 200 pounds, but has the same uh, um, type of training that you have. They have a huge advantage, you know, and that art, the jujitsu system is not designed for small people like Bruce Lee and like the Chinese people. You know, Chinese people are small people, so they're not going to be good at wrestling or football because if, or basketball, wrestling, football, basketball, they're not good at it because they're small people. Like, you don't see Chinese people in the NBA. You don't see Chinese people in the NFL. You don't see Chinese people in WrestleMania. Or, you know, like, these expressions are for big people. And the way Bruce Lee was, he was not a big person. He was adapting the martial arts for his smaller build. And it required a lot of speed. It required you to be on your, on your feet to be able to defend yourself. And if you look at Bruce Lee and the way that he was sparring and the way that he was expressing himself in the movies, using weapons and using speed and hand speed and kicks and all this stuff, he very seldomly was ever on the ground. And if he was, it was, very for, it was for a very short time. So his method has nothing, has nothing similar to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You know, another thing is why all of a sudden you're going to endorse a Brazilian slash Japanese martial arts style when Bruce Lee was representing the Chinese American expression. He didn't bring up other Chinese martial art forms to endorse, but he chose to endorse Brazilian Jiu Jitsu while he's talking about Bruce Lee. And that, to me, I have issues with. I don't agree to that. For the, uh, the attributes that God gave you, and that's where I think where the key is, that if you find what works for you, and you learn from so many people, you, you always have to come. I always tell my students, you want to be always a white belt mentality. Always be a white belt, because a white belt is always hungry. Once you become black belt, because sometimes you can become complacent, and the stomach comes out to here sometimes, you know. So it's always good to be a beginner, I go on the mat every day and if, 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 I, I... It, it always is good to be a beginner. I agree to that, you know, um, but I wouldn't say white belt. I just say no belt. You know, don't claim any belt. Don't claim white belt. Don't claim black belt, but just keep training. Um, but as far as going on the mat every day, I don't agree to that. You shouldn't go on the mat. You should, you should fight standing up and you should perfect the art of standing up so you don't have to go be on the mat. Yes, you need to know how to survive down there, but that is not your go-to. You know, it's like turning Usain Bolt into a wrestler. He's not a wrestler, he's a runner. He does a 100 meter dash, he does a 200 meter dash. He's a runner, he's a sprinter, he's not a wrestler. Don't try to turn him into one. So he even said it, you know, in the video, Find out what your God-given natural abilities are and go with it. So if you're a small person, why would you practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and wrestling when that is not according to who you, that's specialized for you? You know, like, you're not going to be too successful, just like you said in basketball. You know, like you're 5'5", five five. why would you try to go to the NBA? You're 5'5", five five. why would you try to go to the NFL? It's like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, this wrestling stuff, is for big people. Bruce Lee wasn't a big person himself, so... Like, you gotta find out the methods of, to survive for smaller people, you know, and... Even Royce Gracie, the, ma the person that made Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu famous, he's not a small person. You know, so people that, that want to be successful in the martial arts like Bruce Lee was, at being a small person, they, 
they shouldn't be following a Royce Gracie, you know, or practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. They need to find out methods that work for them and then learn from other small people that have shown success in what they do. Like comparing Bruce Lee to Jet Li to Floyd Mayweather Jr. to Jackie Chan to Donnie Yen. These are all small people. And if you're a small person, then learn from the small people. But don't learn from, if you're 5'5", five five, you're a small person, what are you doing studying people that are like over six feet tall and trying to mimic what they do? That's not going to work for you. And even that's what he said in the video too. You know, um, I just really, the main problem that I had at the video was him trying to endorse um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and, and at the same time Jeet Kune Do or Bruce Lee. Um, these people are completely different people. Um, just like he's different from Bruce Lee. He's not Bruce Lee. Royce Gracie's not Bruce Lee. Um, only Bruce Lee is Bruce Lee. And I say um, to learn from Bruce Lee. You know, if, if that's who you gravitate towards. Um, learn from the people that, that you connect with. I just don't connect with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I don't connect with Jiu Jitsu. I don't connect with Karate. I don't connect with Royce Gracie. I don't want, that's not what I endorse. That's not what I'm about. And Bruce, you know, Danny Sano was a lover of Bruce Lee. And I, I love Bruce Lee's teachings, but we have a complete different perspective when it comes to this, you know, just because we're all different people, you know. And one thing I wanted to say is that, like, hey, you know, it's either none of us practice Jeet Kune Do or all of us practice Jeet Kune Do. Because if this person has the authority to claim that he can speak on the behalf of Jeet Kune Do, then I have the same authority as well. Because in my eyes, he doesn't have the authority to speak on behalf of Bruce Lee. And neither do I. Only Bruce Lee can speak for himself. And he, he spoke for himself in the movies and he spoke for himself in his books. But other than that, I don't have the right to speak for him and neither does Danny Insano. But if Danny Insano has the right for us to speak for Bruce, then I also have the right as well. So, and everybody else out there that's a fan of Bruce. You know, so that's the way that I see it. It's either only one Jeet Kune Do, which was Bruce Lee, and that's it, or the entire world practices Jeet Kune Do as long as they wish to claim it. As long as you've seen a Bruce Lee movie and you liked what he did, then go ahead and claim Jeet Kune Do too. Go ahead and speak on behalf of Bruce as well. You know, and I know that that's not correct. You know, I know that the true way is your own way. And he's even indicating that towards in the video as well, you know, but it's also confusing because it's, it's kind of contradicting, you know, in certain things. But, um, you know, he essentially should be speaking on his own behalf as Danny Insano, not speaking about what Bruce would have done or could have done or would have accepted and wouldn't have accepted and things like that, you know. Um, essentially, he doesn't need to be the middle person between Bruce Lee's writings and the public. The public should go right to Bruce Lee's writings and learn from it and his movies opposed to having the truth be partially distorted from what he has to say. Because even Osha would say, you know, a partial truth is worse, worse than a lie because, you know, it, it makes a partial truth makes you believe that it is truth when it's not. But a lie, you already know from the beginning that it is not truth. And that's the thing, you know, Danny Sano was a martial artist in his own right. He taught Bruce Lee the nunchucks, he taught Bruce Lee the double sticks. And Danny Sano wants to endorse Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, and Royce Gracie and all that, but it doesn't mean that Bruce Lee would have done the same. You know, it, does, it doesn't mean that Bruce Lee would have endorsed Royce Gracie or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu 
or that if Bruce Lee was alive, that the UFC would even be in existence. Um, even when Bruce Lee was fighting, or when living, he was, in his movies, he was against the Japanese martial arts. He was against the Japanese people when the, the people were saying, hey, you know, only Chinese people or Chinese people should go on all fours and be treated like dogs when they walk in the park. You know, like, they were fighting Japanese karate people, people with black belts and geese and all that stuff. He went into a room, you know, full of karate people with black belts on, and he beat up the whole, the whole room because they were disrespecting the Chinese people. And the geese that they wear with the black belts are the same geese that they wear in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And Jiu-Jitsu is a Japanese martial art. So here you got Bruce Lee saying that that you don't need a belt, that they're only good to hold up your pants. Here you don't have, you, Bruce Lee's not wearing a gi. Bruce Lee's not having a black belt. Bruce Lee's beating up a bunch of Japanese martial artists all over the place. And then now you got Danny Sano coming in, endorsing the Japanese martial arts and the Brazilian martial arts as at the same time that he's endorsing Bruce Lee. Like that is a con complete contradiction. And like I said, Danny Sano is not Bruce Lee. And if you want to learn from Danny Sano, then great. But don't claim that you're, don't think that you're learning from Bruce Lee when you're learning from Danny Sano. Because he is his own person, just like Bruce Lee was his own person. And I might not have met Bruce Lee face to face, but I connect with his teachings. The Chinese blood is in me. I am Chinese American, he was Chinese American. My last name, I was born with the last name Lee. Bruce Lee, his last name is Lee. Okay, so Danny Sano, his last name is not Lee. Danny Sano, he's not even Chinese, Chinese is Filipino. It's like, if anything, I'm not gonna say that I'm speaking for Bruce Lee, but I'm gonna speak on my own behalf and what I feel is the truth. You know, and based on what I see from Bruce Lee's movies, from his writings, from his teachings, and you try to compare that to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and you try to compare that to Royce Gracie, it is completely not the same. It is not what he was trying to represent. Bruce Lee was not representing what Royce Gracie was representing or is representing. It is not the same. Bruce Lee, no belts. There's belts all over the jiu-jitsu system. No gi for Bruce Lee, gi's all over the jiu-jitsu system. Bruce Lee's stand-up fighter, jiu-jitsu's all on the ground. Bruce Lee's 5'7", Royce Grace is over 6 feet tall. Bruce Lee's 125 pounds, Royce Grace is over 200 pounds. Like, Bruce Lee was endorsing Chinese martial arts. Jiu Jitsu is from Japan. I mean, these are completely different. You know, and I am not an endorser of Royce Gracie. I'm not an endorser of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I, I cannot stand that style. You know, I'll take, if I need, if I, if I learn anything from that style, I will take it and I'll create my own. I'll take it, I'll research it, I'll experiment with it, which I have, I, I, I researched it, I experimented it, which I have, and I created my own. And I don't call it jiu-jitsu, I don't call it Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I call it ground survival tactics. So I created my own. And that's what I did. And that's what he even mentioned in the movie, I created my own has nothing to do with them. You know, so Bruce Lee was creating his own. He had his own way, Ji Kune Do. He learned some double, double sticks and nunchucks from Danny Sano, took it and then expressed it, and then he made it his own. And he learned wrestling, and he learned boxing, and he learned fencing. He, he, 
he researched it, he experimented with it, and then he made it his own. It became a part of Chi Kune Do. You know, I take the firearms, I research it, I experiment with it, I make it a part of my own, it's a part of FMK. The firearms training is a part of FMK. The nunchucks is a part of FMK. The, the, the ground survival tactics is a part of FMK. So I created my own. You know, um, I just have a huge conflict um, with trying to endorse this jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu at the same time talking about Bruce Lee. That to me is very disappointing about Danny Insano and that, um, you know, I'm not a follower of Danny Insano, but this is something that, that I see where we're, we're in direct contrast, you know, and I don't agree with that aspect. You know, feel me, if I get tapped out in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's a learning experience. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't even mind. It used to bother me a lot. I felt like I was a drummer more than a just a practitioner. But uh, uh, <laughs> it's he, he just. All right, so he gets tapped out. He's mentioning getting tapped out in in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Well, that's not his thing. You know, Danny Saddle's not a big person either. So of course he's gonna get tapped out. You know, but it doesn't mean that that's even worth your time to study because it's leading you astray from what you should be focusing on. You know, if you, if you are meant to be a wrestler and you're trying to make it to the Olympics in wrestling, then what are you doing in the boxing ring? Like, what does that have to do with wrestling? Like, you're going to get knocked out in the boxing ring and then now, oh, you know, since I got knocked out in the boxing ring, now I got to dedicate my time to boxing. How is how's dedicating your time in boxing going to help you get better at wrestling? It has nothing to do. The boxing is not going to help you get better at the wrestling. You know, so if you're a small person and you keep getting tapped out when you're doing this ground fighting, like, that, that fighting is not for you. That's for the big people. Just like the, the whole analogy that he's talking about the basketball. You're 5'5", five five. what are you doing trying to make it to the NFL or the NBA? That's not for you. So the ground fighting is not for small people. Like, you got large people out there, 250 pounds, 200 pounds, over six feet tall, strong, training in, in choking techniques, breaking your arms, body slamming you, dropping you in your head, on your head. And they want to fight you. They want to fight you on the ground. And you're 5'5". Five five. What are you doing? You know, it's like... Danny Insano, he's good at stick fighting. He's good at the nunchucks. He's good at what he's good at. What is he doing wrestling around on the ground with these people? Why don't he have them... Why don't he do, ha, do some stick fighting with them and show them the real deal? You know, it's like, why don't he go into the boxing ring with Floyd Mayweather Jr. and get knocked out a thousand times and then learn boxing instead? It's like, you can always, no matter what, you can always find something that you're not good at and then find out and then be like, hey, you know, this is something that I'm not good at, so... But does that mean that you should put your energy and time into getting good at that? Or does it mean that you should focus on what you're meant to focus on? Like, if you don't know how to do your taxes, do you want to learn how to do it? Or do you want to pay somebody else to do it for you? You know, yes, ground fighting and learning how to survive on the ground is important. But there's a difference between learning it for survival opposed to dedicating all your time to specializing in that one aspect of fighting when that's not even meant to be for you because you're, you're built small you know and a lot of this stuff in the combat sports not being highlighted because everybody's fighting against people the same exact size as them you got, you know, girls fighting against girls. 
Ronda Rousey fighting against another female. Why don't you have her fight against GSP? Okay? You have lightweight against lightweight, heavyweight versus heavyweight, middleweight versus middleweight. It's like you don't see the intricacies of real combat because it's all being falsely presented to the public as if it's truth. Like, okay, you have 250, one person that weighs 150 pounds against another person that weighs 150 pounds, and then you go ahead and have them wrestle and go at it. Okay, they both weigh the same, but try to have a 100... 20 pound person try to wrestle with somebody that's 200 pounds see what happens but that's the reality of what's out there in the streets that's why there is such a thing as, as stick fighting and nunchuck fighting because if somebody is so much bigger than you just knock them out with the nunchuck you don't want to be wrestling around the ground with this person you know, it's like, you know, there's a lot that I disagree with in that aspect. But generally speaking, the other things that he was saying, I could see the truth in it. But it was, the totality of the truth was corrupted by Danny Insano's expression. And that's what happens to the truth. You got the truth which is expressed by Bruce Lee and then you got people that try to interpret the truth and then they misinterpret it and then they start giving half-truths and then people start taking those half-truths to be real truth when it's not. And that's dangerous. So people that truly want to learn from Bruce Lee should be learning from Bruce Lee, not Danny Insano. And I'm not even going to say me because I am not Bruce Lee. I'm not speaking on behalf of Bruce Lee. I'm speaking on behalf of my own truth. But this is the truth that I see. You know, and I'll even say it like this. If Bruce Lee himself was endorsing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu today, I will not, still not endorse Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because it does not meet up with how I feel inside and the truth that I see. But I don't even need to say that because in the past, Bruce Lee was showing how his way was superior to the way of karate and the way of the Japanese martial arts back then. And jiu-jitsu is a Japanese martial art. So he's showing the superiority of the Chinese expression, the Chinese martial arts, the Chinese American martial arts, and the balance of the yin yang. And another thing is, he said it himself, you know, research, experiment, create. Okay, so create your own. And that's what Danny Sano should follow as well. Create your own. Don't talk about Bruce Lee. Speak for yourself. Don't bring Bruce Lee into the picture. Speak for yourself. If you endorse Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, go ahead and endorse it according to your own authority. But don't speak on behalf of Bruce Lee and make it appear as if this is something that Bruce Lee would have supported because it's the same type of thing, same type of idea. No. No way. So... That's what I have to say about that. Like I said, this is not meant to be disrespectful to Danny Insano. This is just basically speaking my mind about truth. The truth of what I see compared to the truth of what Danny Insano saw or sees. And we're different people. You know, he's a different person, I'm a different person. And we're both looking at Bruce Lee's expression and we're interpreting it in different ways. And this is important for understanding and growth.